Yes, so once you have set your two points and you're ready to start, um, we can use this little script to investigate the irrigation in Zimbabwe and draw some conclusions on possible ownership change or that something happened there with the production of these two schemes we selected. So what I did first is I created a variable called Zim for Zimbabwe and I call the uh, data set on global um, yeah, boundaries and I filter them by country code which should equal ZI for Zimbabwe. Then I will add this to the map just to make sure that I selected the right one. In a second step I already call the MODIS vegetation indices dataset and um, I will not add it to the map because it's quite massive but we will print uh, the data set to the console to investigate it a bit further. So I run the script and what you see here now is that we have our two points which we see here in geometry in imports decrease and increase and we have one layer which I didn't name probably but it's our layer one which shows the um, country outline of Zimbabwe. And in the print, in the console, we have printed the image collection of MODIS NDVI. And when we have a look at the features, we actually see that um, yeah, acquisition has started in 2000. And then we have some composites uh, showing an NDVI um, layer or image. Um, what I would like us to do now is to understand that we um, do a temporal comparison. So um, we want to compare the um, production or NDVI values or the productivity um, in the beginning to the one in the end of the time series. And therefore I want us to uh, filter the NDVI collection uh, to make kind of yeah two temporal subsets. One would be for the year 2000. So I start by saying filter by date 2001, uh, 1st of January until um, yeah end of 2002, so that we would have images from those two years. And I would do the same for 2010, starting with January 2020, 10 um, and yeah the end of 2011 and also this I printed to the console so that we can see that now we reduced our data set which we printed here on top to 46 elements 23 by year per year and um, what we will do now is we will work with these subsets and um, to work with these subsets, we will um, create first the mean um, for these two data sets. The mean is simply calculated by using the data set and then the operator mean and now comes the trick. I also clipped the data set to uh, Zimbabwe. And this, as I have said before, reduces the data which we work with and also yeah, just eases later on the, um, to work with, with the whole data on the map. So when we run this uh, script again, you see that I have again printed uh, the mean for 2001 and 2002 um, to the console. And here we see that we only have one image NDVI, which is representing the mean of these two years. The same happens for 2010, which yeah, I didn't print because it's just basically the same thing. 
The visualization parameters are left over here. I import them here on the top. But um, what we can do now is we can add these two layers to the map and investigate them a bit further. So I run the script again to add the layers to the map. And here we can already see that we have a stark contrast, which is quite interesting in Zimbabwe as such, because here you can see um, with your bare eye that um, we have certain yeah, former indigenous uh, reserves. They were named in various different names, but uh, local indigenous are um, local um, communal farmers in Zimbabwe were forced to live in these areas while the white minority controlled the rest of the land. And so that's one aspect we see here already by using having a look at the NDVI. And now when we zoom in here to these two points, I will wait a bit until the layers load. You see the resolution is a bit coarse, but it's fine for these big irrigation schemes. And we see that the mean of these two years actually are different. And there's a slight decrease in NDVI for the second data set. And um, yeah, in the second step, we will investigate that a little bit further.